What is SWR? It's called Standing Wave Ratio. So, well, if you're interested, hang around. But this is also relative to, for those people studying for the foundation exam in the UK, but anybody with interest in RF uh, may be interested in SWR. So if you remember from some of the previous episodes on the channel, we discussed a dipole is in total length, half a wavelength. OK, so that's uh, half is the coax is coming down there. I mean, these are two halves. All right. I want you to imagine a bit like a grand piano, grand piano, the very long strings play the low notes and the shortest strings pay the higher notes. So you can't play, you know, bottom E on on a high string on, you know, the, the top octave. Just it's not going to work, right? So it's the same with this. OK, so we will draw this appropriately. If we have a resistor, uh, a 50 ohm resistor, 50 ohms. If you remember, ohms look like this. And we connect our coax to this, OK? To our radio, our 50 ohm coax to our 50 ohm resistor and key up the microphone so the needle goes whoop to full power. What's going to happen is our 50 ohm our energy, right, will go down our 50 ohm coax, eventually get to our 50 ohm resistor and it'll just heat up right now normally we won't have a 50 ohm resistor there we'll have an antenna so our rf would leave the antenna this one here all right our halfway dipole in this case all manner of and i did a few antennas on this video here so go and watch that video if you're interested in a few simple antennas right then now what happens if it's not a 50 ohm resistor but we put a hundred ohm resistor in place, All right? What happens now? Tom M zero R M Y sent me a great graphic the other day, and you can see as our our signal comes along and it hits the wrong antenna, the wrong impedance. Okay, some of it is going to bounce back. All right, that's all that's happening. Some of it's going to bounce back, and in simplistic terms, and I know there's people on the channel going to go, it's a lot more complicated than that. It kind of is and isn't, right? But if you've got a 50 ohm resistor and a 100 ohm termination point, then 100 divided by 50 equals 2, because the 250s are 100. So our SWR is going to be 2 to 1. Right, so that's how you measure it. Now, this is an SWR meter. I've got them on the screen here. Here's one from Martin Lynch. We visit this website. So we can key the microphone, press a few buttons, and that will tell us what our SWR is. Now, the easy way normally out of the problem, let me just head into the book and make sure I'm not going off at a blooming tangent. Um, if the antenna is the correct size, half a wave life long, That'll be a good match to the feeder and be radiate maximum energy. Right. Is it a problem having big SWR? Well, actually, not really. OK, there's a massive document which Tom found for me. Here's one for the geeks. OK, the myth of reflected power. Please don't read this if you're new. OK, <laughs> but it is absolutely fascinating. SWR. Does it matter much? Well, kind of yes and no. If you've got more than two to one SWR, the chances are what's happening is that this antenna is the wrong size by a bit. OK, you need to either trim it or extend it. All right. Now I've done a really simple video here. It's um, about how to trim an antenna for best SWR. It's not really in the syllabus. OK. But in real life, you will need to do that. You'll put an antenna up and you go, oh, it's not quite tuned. It's not middle C. I need to do something about it. It's resonant at 13.9 megahertz and I want it resonant at 14.2 or whatever. So you can cut a bit off. 
or add a bit. And then what will happen? This 100 ohms will come down to 50. You'll get a perfect match. And then your SWR meter will say everything's fine. Does it really matter? Kind of yes and no, I said. Here's the no. Most modern radios, if we take a, I don't know, TS590SG. Right, so this is a TS590SG. I've got one of these. I use it for my holidays. And it says tune AT. It's the antenna tuning. So what actually happens? We've got our antenna here, whatever it looks like. I mean, it doesn't matter, right? And then we've got a coax. And I seem to remember a few times I've drawn the coax in that colour. So I'll continue drawing in that colour. And then we've got our radio here. And it's not quite the right size. OK, it's too long or too short or something. If it's within an acceptable amount, you can hit that button and the radio goes dink, tuned. What does that actually do? It takes the mismatch. So we'll zoom into this bit here. It takes the mismatch between the coax here and the antenna. Right, it takes this mismatch and it just does a bit of transformation and makes the radio happy. That's all it does. It makes the radio happy. OK, so tick radio happy. It thinks it's effectively connected to 50 ohms and your SWR is now one to one. Would it matter in a modern radio if it was two to one? Probably not. What may happen is that the power would just be restricted very slightly. Yeah, maybe down to 75 watts from 100 or whatever else. But you just hit the ATU button. Brrr, tink. Oh, oh, fine. I'll carry on as I am. And for the old timers here, the ones who are the paranoids, you really want to read this one here. It's fantastic. And what's even better is the comments. <laughs> That's a, it's a big argument brewing for, on the comments. All right. So there we are. Now, you can also do this with an outboard ATU. Right. So instead of that little button and we, we show I showed you the AT4K. I mean, they're just less expensive models. I just happen to have this. I got it as a gift years ago. The AT4K, here it is here. Um, and that will tune almost anything. It's a bit, you've got to go, oh, you know, it's a bit higgledy-piggledy. It's not the sort of thing you want to do every day unless you just know, oh, on the 20-meter band, that's at 57 and that's at 23, and then you've got a roller inductor here. That's really for balance line or people using something called 80 meter band, which is a very wide bandwidth and they want to go all the way from the bottom to the top. All right. But as a newbie in this industry and this old hobby, you don't need a blooming great big ATU, outboard ATU, but that'll do your transformation match as well. It's an outboard ATU. You can get automatic ones as well. You know, you just go hello and it goes ding. So there we are. What have we missed? Standing waves. I've shown you what a standing wave is and how to measure it. OK. Antenna tuning units. Right. OK. Next time, balance and dummy loads. And if you remember, a dummy load is not a medical thing. OK. It's nothing to do with the fertility clinic. <laughs> a dummy load is basically your... Oh, I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to tell you what a dummy load is until the next video. All right, so I'll see you then. All right, have a good day. Catch you later. Adios.